When the heat is on and you're pulling up dust trails behind those oncoming raiders, it's time to grab a carrying cola. Yes, fellow wastelanders, only carrying cola can deliver all the unessential vitamins, minerals, electrolytes, and crude oils all in one slurry. There's nothing like it, really. Crack open a bottle of carrying cola and delight in its unforgettable texture and aroma. Carrying cola, <laughs> you've had worse things in your mouth. We did this ourselves. They're coming. It can't be. Where is everyone? Crazies and gentle fiends, it's my pleasure to bring you, from beyond exile and with one boot in his grave, the longest surviving member of my tribe, the anti-hero of the wastes, and until an uprising that shall be answered for, the war chief of the Dukes of the Nuke. Here is former war chief Grimm. Hello. How is it out there in the wastes, my friend? Oh, it's a cold and merciless place, and I love every minute of it. <laughs> of course you do. Now, for everyone who doesn't know, Grimm has had a decade-long tenure at Wasteland Weekend that culminated in 2019 with a little bit of LARP that had half of Wasteland City tribes turn against us, the Dukes of the Nuke, which all resulted in Grimm getting exiled from the city. Now, is that a fair way to put it? It was a goddamn coup, is how you can put it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's the thing, guys. You can actually see this entire thing take place because I had my camera rolling. It's on the Apocalypse Post YouTube channel where Hotshot, who is currently in charge of the Dukes of the Nuke in Grimm's absence, and I go over the whole thing minute by minute, every whiplash, every bad bit of acting from Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to link that below so you guys can check it out. But for now, I want to know what you want to talk about, War Chief, because I know you've had an itchy trigger finger to get on this show, pull rank, and show me how it's done. Well, I don't know if I could show you how it's done, Makeshift. You seem to be the man with the plan when it comes to the Wasteland Entertainment. But uh, I have been wanting to share my side of the story for, uh, for a good long while now. Have you really? Well, good, because here's what I want to do. Let's start all the way back in the beginning, because you're one of Wasteland's oldest, not only like, you're not only one of the wa oldest Wastelanders, you're one of the Wasteland's oldest characters. The Dukes of the Nuke were formed in 2011, the very first year that tribes were an official thing. And it, so it all started ago. with just a few of you guys. So tell me, like, you know, how'd you get involved? Well, you know, I actually fell into the Dukes. Um... Well, I didn't really fall into it, seeing how as I <clears throat> kind of came up with it. But uh, I was just <laughs> living in L.A. for a few years at the time. And a buddy of mine uh, by the name of Marcus, who is the other co-founder uh, of the tribe, uh, he hit me up because uh, he apparently thought he saw me in L.A. I just happened to be living in L.A., so call it fate, as you will. Um, we got to link up, and I had seen some photos of him out in the desert, dressed in Mad Max kind of garb, uh, walking around with uh, a sign on him that said, uh, Dr free drinks at the Atomic Cafe. <laughs> um, I, I, Wait, I, the I, sign was on him? Oh, yeah. He was a walking billboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, you know, if you ask him, he did backflips for bottle caps. Um, but, you know, it's it's hard to say. I wasn't there with him that first Road Warrior weekend. This was back before it was even Wasteland weekend. This was just... Oh, wow. Yeah. So, he went to the last Road Warrior weekend, if I'm not mistaken. And then by the time uh, we got to go, they were just coming up with tribes. And that was the first year that actually you and I met. We were just neighbors, actually, because you had a GP tent and so did we. And we got along and lit the house on fire. Right. We, uh, <laughs> I met up with Marcus. We, we ended up going out there with uh, just five people and his Land Cruiser in one tent. Mm -hmm. This was bare bones. This, this was the, the beginnings of the Dukes. So we, <laughs> it wasn't, there were no <laughs> themed camps, really. Um, everybody was very spaced out, um, plenty of, plenty of walking around room. And we were sat next to the, first Thunderdome, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. You guys were like a stone's throw away. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we we got the real OG taste of the first Wasteland in 2011. I fell in love with it. Like immediately when I got back, I'm like, I'm going to go again and again and again and again. And it kind of snowballed after that because after that got started and we started the Dukes, I believe you left your tribe and you joined up with us the following year. Well, I had I had formed a tribe called the Scribes in 2011. I the and basically the Scribes <laughs> were just us. We were it was just the documentary crew. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Trying to 
do a tribe thing, which we barely did anything. We just kind of named ourselves the scribes and put up a small flag. We were just camping together as the doc- documentary crew. But then after that, I was like, man, I can't completely run a tribe and run the doc crew. So can I join you guys and basically, you know, eat your food and and live in your tents and then mm-hmm. you guys feed me and then I don't have to do any work. Yeah, it, it was it was it, 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 it was and Harriet right from the get go. Yeah, <laughs> no, it actually worked out really nicely because um, so I met you and Marcus at a, at a Wasteland Weekend Build Day, my very first day shooting the gate, with the gate photo shoot, right? Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> when because this was at Adams Chilson's house, mm-hmm. you where, and your brother were there. That's right. Yeah, and they were building the gate for the first time because in 2010. Wasteland Weekend didn't have a gate. It was just kind of a camping festival. Mm -hmm. And then Adam Chilson got involved and he was like, you know, I've tried to build these gates three times before and this time I'm going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) And so, yeah, that was a great build weekend. It was like the finishing touches and the photo shoot to do some promo for the festival. You guys caught me in my bare bones, baby's first Wasteland outfit that, that year. And what an outfit it was. (laughs) <laughs> it definitely was not the Duke's. We didn't even come up with the Duke's theme like for costuming, like because that that kind of like just took off from me getting dressed up down in garb. I'm like, oh yeah, we're all military themed, and it kind of slowly started to clash into one uniform esque look, but yeah. not too uniform esque. And here's the thing: I'm really glad that we grabbed military because military is one of the easiest costume themes to do. Oh yeah, but now it's my like general wardrobe already. So, <laughs> oh no, both, both ways for me. Oh yeah, my I I live I've off military surplus. My boots last forever. My jeans last forever. I got no complaints. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> and um, you know, at this point, it's like there's enough military tribes out there that it's mm-hmm. kind of discouraged to be a new military tribe. So mm-hmm. because we're like this legacy ex-military gunrunner tribe we kind of you know we grandfathered ourselves in is really what mm-hmm. it came down to i i've heard us referred to as og oh yeah <laughs> hey do you remember what the dukes were going to be called before you settled on dukes of the nuke i believe it was fubar was the yeah. name that was being tossed around it was it came down to that or dukes of the nuke and dukes of the yep. nuke had that little kind of royal-esque charm to it so i'm like yeah yeah it's a little bit that? it's a little bit royal and it's a little bit like like humorous Mm -hmm. we're a little bit country a little bit rock and roll (laughs) that's so true (laughs) yeah um but yeah joining we're all rock and roll so (laughs) (laughs) yes we are uh yeah dukes dukes camp during the day Mm -hmm. what what are we always playing well this 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 started this this is a whole slippery slope into a bigger topic but (laughs) we um as the dukes and as the 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 war chief of the tribe at the time, I had decided that we need a war crier. We need somebody to strike fear in the hearts of our enemies. And I got this idea from Apocalypse Now and, you know, all these other military stories that I read. And I knew that Motorhead was a perfect fit because it has that Mad Max vibe. You know, you got that white line fever, but you also have (laughs) Ace of Spades. You also have Stay Clean. You also have Don't Need Religion. You got something for everybody in there. So, uh, I decided that Motorhead and Lemmy would be the Odin <laughs> to our religious musical tier. I love um, it. For those of you that don't know, in the lore, the Dukes um, worship old world metal bands as their gods. Slayer, Metallica, <laughs> Bathory, Motorhead, obviously. Uh, and so, we use those and we, whenever you hear Motorhead, you know the Dukes are around. And it's actually gotten to the point now where people hear that and we'll usually scurry or or gather <laughs> <laughs> awesome and now our our look is kind of like a little bit before 80s rock it's it's more of like a vietnam korean war era that's right yeah um i've always been fascinated with the military and military history and vietnam korean war all that stuff and i always loved their uniforms and yeah that, that was something in the mad max movies that I always got curious about, I'm like, where's the military? Like what happened to these guys after the bombs fell? Like, and so, you know, anytime you'd see like, you know, in Fury Road, you've got military garb on the the bullet boys, you know, and you see Max's outfit where he has patches of web webbing vest and, uh, you know, that, that pistol holster on his leg and it kind of gets added in. I figured we should just go the full nine yards and have what remains of the military <laughs> in the apocalypse and they've ironically become gun runner mercenaries. Yeah. Now the, now military is always really prominent in zombie movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they're like the last line of defense whenever mm-hmm. an outbreak happens. Right. 
Yeah. Well, they, they, they well, I can't say that they're always successful, but uh, <laughs> almost they usually never. are either the first to call or the last line of defense when it comes to that. Yeah. And I'm a huge zombie fan myself. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> I definitely tried to do my homework. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, the Dukes of the Nuke, we've got the GP tents. We've got this old like Vietnam Korean War look going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we completely like drape our whole camp in camo netting. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and like you were saying earlier with the music, we in the daytime, yes, we listen to a lot of Motorhead, but I've meshed in, speaking of Vietnam, a lot of Armed Forces Vietnam Network broadcasting, like, you know, taglines or teasers to make it actually seem like we have our own military radio station. Um, yeah. This year, I'm trying to record my own little, you know, little singers and zips for, for our own radio station. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of nice because we get something from all the eras. We get from World War II all the way up to Vietnam, Bob Hope, USO shows, things like that, all on audio. So it's really fun to have people walk in and have that going to hear those ads and hear those old, old timey, like, you know, just entertainment spots from World War II because it, it just adds to the ambience of the environment and immerses you even more. Just because you brought it up, that USO show, I know you've wanted to do one for a long time. <laughs> I, I have. I, I never, never, ever got to do it. Um, it, it almost came through, but uh, I think what it came down to was the stage and lighting at that point. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to pull it off this year, don't you? We, well, you know, I like to say uh, <laughs> we, we make do and yeah. uh, we're going to make it happen this year for <laughs> sure. I think the trick to it was like, You know, it finally clicked for me, like, because I've been trying to make it happen too. Obviously, Wasteland is a very busy time for both of us. Mm -hmm. But um, I think like, you know, having some kind of a show that we put on at the Dukes would be awesome. And the USO show makes tons of sense. It's it's in our era. Um, It's a variety show. So it can be entertaining. It can be a lot Mm -hmm. of different things. And it's also inclusive too. It's not just people coming to watch. It's also people coming to participate, which is, that's really the key with all activities is making them all inclusive for everybody. Totally. Yeah, so I think that that adding in this like open mic element to it mm-hmm. is going to be awesome. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to you, know, you being the MC for this. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to MC. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll at least introduce the thing because mm-hmm. um, I know we had a lot of Dukes that were very interested in doing some MCing. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Right, <laughs> we can't even get them to form up in in. Lineation, lineup, well, and I guess, formation. I guess the big question is, Mike. I'm exiled. I have no say or control over this. But <laughs> <laughs> will you be allowing the nightmare, Mr. Fahrenheit, to attend said uh, festivities? Uh, hell no! Isn't he also exiled? No, that's Mayor Heist. Oh, well, ex-Mayor Heist now. Good, Darn good it. man, Mayor Heist. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it! You know it's tough to keep up on all this lore. So actually, let's back it up because okay. uh, the Dukes of the Nuke were. Like we've been kind of a hub of lore for a long time, which is such an honor. Like we're Mm -hmm. not a huge entertainment tribe because, um, you know, we haven't done the USO show yet. Mm -hmm. But as far as Wasteland Weekend goes, we've always been, you know, one of these hubs of Mm. interaction between tribes. And that goes all the way back to, I think, 2013 or 14 when yeah when uh, the shenanigans one, started that's what we call it the shenanigans it was shenanigans back then now it's lore <laughs> i think it goes back to yeah no it goes back to 2013 you're right because i missed 2012 for a wedding uh-huh. so 2013 is when the lore started and um i was i've been by the way i've been listening to every episode thank you and you do a wonderful <laughs> show i really oh, appreciate so you having me on uh, but I was listening to the episode with, um, critical bigs and the Baron and party chief manga Mungo. That was a great episode. Oh, that was a wonderful episode. I was honored that you all drank to my name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we're not doing that this episode. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've continued that. I think we're going to take a break tonight though, because, um, we will get, maybe the audience has drunk. to drink every time they hear my name. Now so. you're talking. Yes. All right, guys. Every time you hear the name war chief Grimm, you need to drink out there. You know, any vice you got, go ahead and take a hit, a sip, whatever you got. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You want to chrome it up, chrome it up. Uh, yeah. So it, it goes all the way back to 2012. Lore was always on the back of the action figure box for the Dukes in 2011. You know, I gave a whole backstory of who we were. Wasteland said, we're great. Come on in. I'm like, all right, yeah. great. 2012 rolls around. I missed it. 2013 rolls around. And uh, that was the first year that I met the Baron. That is the first year I believe I met Critical Bigs, uh, but we didn't get to know each other until I believe the year or two after. Uh, yeah. But with the Baron, he explained the story of how we, I'm sorry, 
party chief Mongo explained how we uh, <laughs> went into the Baron's place into Undertown, had the Rochambeau of rock, paper, scissors, and, you know, how by the skin of my teeth. And, you know, I was I, sure I looked terrified, but that's all part of the show. Uh, <laughs> but, no, uh, the Baron is absolutely correct. I was, I was petrified because I had no idea what was going on at the time. I just went for it. Like, you know, awesome. I, I decided that we needed to embrace the fact that we're gun runners and the fact that somebody came to us saying, Hey, I need help with my bounty. Can you help us catch him? Like, this is our chance. Awesome. This is our chance. We got to kick, we got to go in and kick the door open. And oh, so and, and let me, we all let, me got in, mm-hmm. let me stop you real quick. Yeah. Because this was before um, tribe missions was a thing. The, mm-hmm. the Rust Devils, this was like the first year they brought out their bounty game. That's correct. Yeah. So, so you could literally, and we've mentioned this before in the show, but the Rust Devils would set up this, this whole wall of wanted posters. And if you were going to play the game, you became wanted and you also grabbed someone else's poster and you had to go find them for a Rochambeau. It was a beauty. Of yeah. a tribe mission. The, yeah, so great. The godfather of all tribe missions. Yes. Um, I've had a lot of good experiences through that. The Rust Devils, I couldn't thank them enough for putting on such a good activity. Um, and they definitely inspired myself to get involved and start pulling people in. And that's yeah. exactly what this kicked off. Um, we made a lot of friends doing that. The fact that we took down the Baron in his own place, always a legendary tale to tell. Uh, <laughs> I like to tell it many times at Cool Crest Lounge. Awesome. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the lore from there really just kind of snowballed because a lot of the members really didn't even know there was lore or what was going on. And I believe that kind of continued for a little bit as people were like, what are we doing? Oh, okay, we're doing this. Like, we're going to go, you know, harass these people or yell at those people or scream at the skull duggers. Yeah. That was <laughs> but, a thing uh, back then, right? Because there wasn't a whole lot to do during the day. No, no, there wasn't. Right? There Very were there activities scheduled. that the camps would hold like, hey, there's an archery when archery was still allowed. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, a magic show or, you know, little, little things that people yeah. would just bring in just one man shows. But it's grown so much with events and activities. The lore itself has kind of fused its way in. So now I believe what was just like kind of a feud that started with us and the Skullduggers Mike and I met up, I believe, the next year, and I'm like, we should be enemies. Like, we should absolutely be enemies. <laughs> That's the Baron, Mike. Yes. I'm, yep. Excuse me. Yeah, Mike the Baron. <laughs> and, uh, uh, from there, um, it was all about having that animosity and building on that. Um, yeah. My aim with being grim has always been the idea of, like, if, if the Duke's camp is frontier land, then I got to be the Mickey Mouse character in there kind of – you know, <laughs> taking you over to Tom Tom Sawyer's Island or whatever. Uh, <laughs> That's great. It's it's all about for me. It's it's putting on a show, but also you know, kind of letting yourself go in the sense of like you're stepping into another pair of shoes for the weekend. Why not just go full one hundred percent and just get into character for folks who are there to play? You know what yeah. I mean? And I've always been really impressed by your ability to get into character. <laughs> and just stay there. And I don't mean for, for Wasteland. You stay in character like all year um, as far as like on, in the online forums and, and dealing with the Dukes of the Nuke and stuff. Like you're always kind of like thinking about how our tribe's interacting with others and Wasteland as a whole and just mm-hmm. you're, you're always thinking it through. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> Wasteland is something that's on my mind quite often. Um, I, I, <laughs> I really do love the event. Um, it has kept me coming back and I've made more than friends there. I've made family. It's a big family reunion for me now every year. Being exiled, it's a little difficult now to come back, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, staying in character, um, it's it's at the event. It's, you know, it's obviously you need breaks every now and again, uh, but of course. You, you only get to do it once a year. You know what I mean? Like you only get to embrace that side of you for one year. And that's, that's something that I really enjoy about the event is that you can go there as a first time wastelander being like, I I'm all about this. Like, what do I do? And it's like, that's my favorite because you can become whoever you want to be. Like this is, this is all about camping out on a big movie set and, you know, playing Mad Max. You yeah. Know, you're, and some people aren't into that. Some people are, um, I support both sides of it. You know, my goal there is as grim is not only to, you know, harangue people and be a loud mouth son of a bitch, but also, <laughs> um, I want to make sure you're having a good time. And if it's your first time, I want to make sure you're having a great time. Um, my favorite is when we have first time wastelanders come into our camp. Yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite things to do. I really like going 
uh, balls to the wall when it comes to my persona for that. I've, I think I've scared a couple people, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, I always try to like, you know, just like, Hey man, just want to let you know you're great and you're doing a great job. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like, I like that because sometimes, especially with like, you know, tribe missions and stuff, it's, it's your chance to give just a little bit of theater. Uh-huh. Um, and you can, you can be like, Hey, I need you to go find this guy. He's somewhere out in the wastes. Uh, <laughs> see what you can do, but watch out. He's really bad. And he's got a whole army. And then you're like, Hey, don't worry. Just go find this camp. Just talk oh, yeah. to this guy. You'll be all good. So you yeah. kind of give him like, here's the character thing, blah, blah, blah. And then like, you kind of give him that little bit of like gentle caressing. <laughs> oh yeah. I got a perfect story for that. Actually, this happened uh, just this past year. Uh, well, the year before last, uh, but the year of my exile, there was this first timer who came to our camp and he, uh, Vash, our armor called me over. He's like, Hey, uh, war chief, you know, come on over here. And he's like, Hey, listen, this is so-and-so. And he's having a, you know, this is his first year there. I'm like, Oh, welcome. You know, like I gave him, gave him the introductions and asked him how his event was going. He's like, really good. I just want to see what I can do to help out. I want to see how I can help the Dukes. And I was honored to hear this, like kid's first year, he's already, you know, wanting to jump in both feet in the water. So I'm like, okay, I got a special mission for you. This isn't on the books. And so I pull him aside. I'm like, I need you to go to the mayor's office right down there. And I point down the street and I need you to tell the deputy mayor to go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him that Grim says to go fuck himself. And he's like, are you, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm dead. Do I look like I'm joking? And he's like, oh, 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 okay, okay, I'll do it. And I'm like, all right, man, good luck. And so he goes and, you know, I just shake my head. I'm like, kids, you know, just walk back over to the armory and lo and behold, five minutes later, he comes back. He's like, I did it. I did it. I'm like, good job. I'm like shake his hand. I'm like, bash, give this man a reward. And then I look over his shoulder and I see a Jeep coming my way. And this Jeep <laughs> belongs to the mayor, Mayor Heist. And he doesn't look happy. And uh, he pulls up alongside. I'm like, Mr. Mayor, what brings you, you know, to our camp? And he says, War Chief Grimm. I believe you had a message for me to go fuck myself. And I look right <laughs> to the rookie. And I'm like, dude, you gave that to Mr. Fahrenheit. He's like, oh, you said the mayor. No, I'm like, oh boy. And so I had, I'm like, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. That was not for you. That was for your deputy mayor. He's like, I see, I see. Okay, well, I'll just have my eye on you. So I thought that was probably one of my favorite little mission events that, that uh, has happened in the past couple of years. But there have been so many. I mean, we have so many missions now. Like you were saying, it started out with the Rust Doubles just bounty hunting and now... Ever, I think uh, most tribes have missions to offer. Yeah, and it's great because, um, you know, it was kind of invented or not invented, but it was it, the, the whole idea was every tribe could have some small thing to to interact with Wastelanders, right? Mm-hmm. And so you can go to any camp and get work, you know, just like a video game where it's a side mission in a video game and you can earn like small prizes. And I think it's been great because a lot of the tribes will have like a special bottle cap or or some small trinket or you know, something you can earn and have this collection of like, you know, it's all, it's all just a bunch of junk, but it has value. Yeah. Right. Sentimental value. Obviously it all yeah. has value. It's <laughs> really hate to call it junk. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all a bunch of scrappers out there, right? Well, gun runners, scrappers, I mean, call us what you will heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, another story that I've told on this show before so the army of Los Angeles was one of our allies against the Skullduckers. Was being the key word. Exactly. And at some point they betrayed us. I'm not sure ex- all the details on that. Can you give oh. us the quick overview on, oh. on what happened with the army of Los Angeles? I would be happy to. Uh, the army of Los Angeles, the Juggers, the uh, army of Los Angeles, and I believe that's two teams on there. So you got the army of Los Angeles and the, uh, and the red city Juggers and the red city Juggers. Yep. That's right. So we were helping out the army of Los Angeles as mercenaries in the lore by giving them backup and support when they asked for it. Um, they were very much about the camaraderie, invited us to dinners, you know, treated us like allies and it was, and for a time it was good, but Everybody knows that mercenaries get paid. And yes, the Baron <laughs> had some comments on how we had not gotten paid a lot. And when I, I footed the bill to City Buster, uh, they uh, refused to pay. What? So I told them, like, listen, we're going to, we're going to end up, uh, I'm going to have to cut your services off until you pay. So they made a big stink and declared war on us. <laughs> so, uh, lo and behold, you can see <laughs> relations going south very quickly. Right. Uh, they tried to counter and pay us, I believe, uh, three years ago with uh, bars of gold. That's but right. They, 
-hmm. they had a whole bunch of doubloons and they were spreading them around town and they definitely tried to buy us back. Yes, but unfortunately for them, that was wood painted to look like gold. <laughs> and I told them it was to, supposed. To, that's the it's the theater of it, though. Oh yeah, I know. I just had to, I had to point that out, and I told them that caps. <laughs> it's it caps are what pay. Like that's my pay. I take caps. I don't take gold. Oh, okay. I'm not bank. All right, <laughs> that seems more in character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's they they offered payment, and I. Uh, I took quite a big offense because I told them, like, this is the amount that you owe me, and I want it in caps. And when they came by saying, hey, here's some gold, and we want you to be, be security at, at my wedding, I told him to get the fuck out of here before I throw him out. And, uh, you know, relationships have gone south. Um, I was I was sad that I did not get to attend the marriage ceremony of Princess <laughs> Snickerdoodle and uh, General City Buster. But, uh, you know, it's that's okay. That's... Uh, I wasn't going to have any participation while we're not getting paid for it. Now, that interaction with City Buster mm. was, is one of the interactions that stands out to me at Wasteland because um, when he came over and invited you to the wedding, that was your first time seeing each other at the event that year. Mm -hmm. And you let him have it. You told him to get the fuck out of my camp. No mm -hmm. way. What are you even doing here? Are you trying to get yourself killed? Mm -hmm. And and it was hilarious because he just he was trying so hard. He just wanted to invite you to his wedding, and you were not having it. Well, and then can't and then he blame started me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't blame you at all. <laughs> but then, as he started walking out of the camp, a little bit dejected, you were like, "Oh, hey, how's it going?" You know, you broke character, and you guys oh, gave yeah. each other big hugs because you know your best friends are your mm -hmm. enemies at Wasteland, and likewise because it's so much more fun to be enemies. Frenemies is a yeah. really good term. That's definitely a, a, a term we had with the skull doggers until the exile for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're right. Um, sometimes in the lore, the reason I like to break character and check in on people is because sometimes people don't know you're joking. You know, um, I've had many times where like, Oh man, what the fuck was up with Grim? And I'm like, Hey man, it's just, I'm just in character. Oh, so okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and sometimes you're just in character and, uh, People don't know it. So I, I try to like catch that glimpse of like, like, is he joking? Is he not joking? And just reassure people like, hey, I'm just in character. Like, come on by. Let's have a beer. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I think that's one of the things that makes events like Wasteland a little bit more accessible because, you know, th there is some LARP happening. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. you know, when you go to Ren Fair, everyone that is involved in the Ren Fair is in character the whole time. And then there's the audience, right? But at Wasteland, people that are in character will break at any moment. And you can still have like a, a real world conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because everyone's in costume, you're kind of already at the level of the, of like the, the most seasoned wastelanders. You know, you mm -hmm. can't really tell people apart. No, really. No. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, well, you know, it's like you get to know these people while they're in character. And then <laughs> the even better part is getting to know them when they're out of character. Right. Um, a lot of my introductions to people that I hold near and dear to my heart have been in character or through character interaction. And the most rewarding part about all of that is hearing somebody say, that was great. Or I had so much fun doing that. <laughs> like, you know, yes. the, you know, anybody who, who I want to play with anybody who wants to play, you know, and, uh, I want to make sure that they're having as much fun as I am with it. Um, so that, you know, even, even the interactions sometimes we'll talk about beforehand, like, Hey, listen, just so you know, you owe me a bunch of money and that, that's so why I'm going to be acting like this. But, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the exile slash like retirement, like that was, like, we had some pre-planning in there, but a lot of that was off the cuff. Like most yeah. of it was, um, I had, did you planned, ever think that many people were going to show up? Oh God, no, no, <laughs> I, I didn't expect something like that. Um, because, you know, it was it was a little sudden, but, you know, after being a war chief for so long, I decided it was time to uh, put down my hat. Because like you say, when you're in character, it's it's a lot. And, yeah. um, you know, I wanted I didn't want to burn myself out um, rolling that way. Um, and yeah, so you were so, planning on taking a year off for 2020, which mm -hmm. uh, I think it's your fault that the whole thing got canceled. Well, no, no. You remember when, you know, I got, I got banished and exiled. It's, it's, it's the deputy mayor and his wife's fault. Oh, no, right. Just of kidding. course. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, but no, it's, um, it's, it's unfortunate that we missed last year though. Uh, yeah. that really does suck. But, um, yeah. Was that enough it, time off for you? Are you coming back? <laughs> you know, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It, uh, it is. 
I haven't, I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, it's been a, a pretty wild year, but I, I would, I would love to come back. Yeah. Um, would I, what would I come back as? Nobody knows. Oh, Maybe okay. I'll be in disguise. Maybe I'll, I'll be a whisper on the wind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of the fun thing is, is if you change your costume, you can come back as a different character and everyone will just be like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I've, I've thought about that. There have been some ideas, but, um, you know, honestly, I'm very curious to see how the Dukes operate um, minus a war chief. That's been one thing I've oh, been yeah. curious on because it's now, I believe, a mercenary council. Is that right? It's yeah. It's more of a council. I think I, I think Hotshot is you know she's she's at the head of the table. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, well, I thought you were going to take the mantle. Well, who's got time for that, really? <laughs> well, I know you don't. I hardly see you at Wasteland as is, and you're in my tribe. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned um, like you know, taking some time off, going incognito. Mm-hmm. There's several, like at this point, it's dozens of Wastelanders that are like, I don't want to say celebrities, but they're Wasteland celebrities. They're they're really yeah. well known. And so people seek them out. The Baron is is one of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, really, there's just so many people that are really well known in the Wasteland community now. And so it, it's very taxing. Uh, because people are always coming to visit you. You always kind of have to be on and ready. You know, you don't really get to close your shop. You just get to like disappear. So you had an incognito character. And I know this has become a thing that several Wastelanders have done is have a second costume Mm -hmm. where you're not as prominent as your main character and you can kind of experience Wasteland as an unknown. Yeah, that was something I kind of had the idea of doing and just like, you know, seeing what was up. So like just visiting other camps because like you say, when you're, when you're, I, I, again, I use the term wasteland celebrity, but you know, only because other people do. Yeah. Uh, when you have the wasteland celebrity status, one thing it's, it's, it's a little jarring for me sometimes because, you know, I, I, I still think I'm, I'm just a guy who attends a festival just like everybody else. Right. Like, you know, I'm, I'm no different from anybody, and, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's fun to have people come over and say, you're him, you're war chief grim, you know, like it's, I, I really get excited for you know, folks who get excited. So, you know, just showing them a good time is what it's all about. But you're right. There's, there's no uh, real break to it. Like you can take breaks, but I'm the worst person at doing it. Um, (laughs) And you could probably say that, you know, anytime I'm sitting on that throne, people are coming to pretty much talk or threaten or look for a fight or, right. um, But that's, that's what, that's what happens when you're like an NPC boss, you know, you're (laughs) everybody (laughs) wants to fight you. Totally. Yeah, and I know that, um, you know, like the Baron, one of his favorite things to do is to lose. Um, he oh, play, yeah. He'll play Moncala yeah. with anybody and he's terrible at it. And so anybody can come challenge him to Moncala and probably mm-hmm. beat him and they've just taken down a Wasteland Warlord, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's it because, you know, we're, we're kind of the bad guys, right? Yeah. You know, like we're- The heels. That, yeah. We got to have that hero come in and- and teach us what's what. And I've taken my fair <laughs> share of, 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 of lashings on that front. But it's all about putting on a good show. It's all about giving that experience to somebody and to take home and say, I went into this place, I did this thing, and I took out the the warlord in charge, you know? Right. And I think everybody who visits deserves a good war story. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, because, you know, in the early days of Wasteland, we said it was like stepping into a Mad Max movie as an extra, as background, mm-hmm. right? But then as it evolved, it was more like you're the hero in this first person video game. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you go out and you collect things and you barter and and you can do these tribe missions and you can you can earn rank in tribes like while you're there. Yeah. I think that's so cool. It's it's the amount of inclusiveness in all tribes and what they have to offer has been one of the most fascinating things for me about the event because people bring what they got and they put on a show for everybody there. It's, it's such a community that is built on everybody doing their own thing, but giving it to the bigger picture. So we're gun runners. We've got a casino, we've got a radio station, a mail, like, you know, a post office, uh, you know, you name it. It's probably there. I believe we have an art gallery. We have a movie theater and it's just, the list goes on and it keeps getting bigger every year. I mean, 
there's a carnival there now, for God's sake. And it's, right. it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something I've, I, I love talking about is how, you know, Wasteland City is now a city. And there's a lot of things that a city needs to run. And mm -hmm. so people will see a gap. They'll see, you know, um, I don't like early on, there's no post office. And so the WCC, the Wasteland Communication Corp Corporation, I got to get that right because he corrected <laughs> me on one of these shows. They are not the, they are not the Wasteland Communication Corps as it's spelled. <laughs> they are the corp, the corporation. So, um, so they, they created not only a post office, but also a newspaper um, and they run Wasteland Radio. So they, they've not only like Wasteland Radio used to be an MP3 player in a little box with a tiny little FM transmitter. Mm -hmm. And they turned it into like, it's a real station with a real studio where they do real interviews live at oh, yeah. on site. It's so cool. It's super impressive. The Swede and that tribe really pull out all the stops. Deadline does an amazing job with the Wastelander. If you have not gotten a copy of the Wastelander at the event, <laughs> make that a priority. It is, it is hilarious. They are great. And it is a hell of a good way to learn about the lore that's going on in the city. That's a really good point, too, because, you know, a, a lot of Wasteland happens kind of on the fly. And if you happen to be there, you get to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the newspaper is actually picking up these little stories from around Wasteland and sharing them. Yeah. And, you know, not even all the lore, like you brought up earlier, not all the lore happens even at the event. A lot of this happens online in forums where... You know, tribes and tribe leaders will create feuds and claim territory, and it's all done in a fictional headspace, but it gets brought to the event, and they rep it well. It's it's about tooting your own horn and what tune you play. Yeah. Speaking of, like, coming up on this year, mm -hmm. uh, we are now post-pandemic. Um, Wasteland, uh, you know, a, a couple months ago said this event's going to happen. We're going to do, we're going to mandate vaccines so that we can do this so we can keep it safe for everybody. But they kind of already know that this is going to be a bit of a scaling back year mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily scaling back, but, but we just know it's probably going to be a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, some tribes aren't going to be able to make it for various reasons, whether Obviously, it's, yeah. whether it's pandemic or, or money or infrastructure, or whatever, it doesn't matter. They just can't make it this year. And other tribes are doubling down and saying they're going to go all in to try to like make up for that. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen this year? You know, that's that's a big uh, talking point, I think, because I don't – it's hard to predict with what co how COVID has affected the event and in regards to, you know, what kind of restrictions will be in place. I, I imagine that people will conduct themselves accordingly and, you know, other tribes will try and step up their game, obviously. I, I have no idea what to expect, to be honest. This is uh, – a this is kind of uncharted territory in the sense of uh, I've, I've never been to this event post pandemic. It's <laughs> <laughs> so true. I'd like to say that as a community, Wasteland, the Wasteland community for me is one of the most like, I think, you know, the core community, they have a lot of good things to build on and they always are inclusive. They're always, looking out for one another. I've never really had a bad experience with the community at Wasteland ever. Like, you know, and that being said, uh, I'd like to think that positive things will come of this. I'd like to think that we're all going to pull together and do what needs to be done to keep this event going that we know and love. Um, yeah. And if that means scaling back and putting some restrictions on there, I'm all for it. You know, I'm, I'm safety first <laughs> and then and then wasteland second i think is going to be the mentality this year totally and you know what i think this is going to kind of offer up a unique opportunity because for the last four or five years wasteland has been just too big to see it all right oh yeah um, there's been multiple entertainment venues there's been people in the thousands uh, I think the last event was just over 5,000 people. Oh, wow. Site. So that's a lot of people. Yeah. You know, a lot of people like to talk about the early years of Wasteland when it was, <laughs> you know, scaled back a little bit more intimate where you knew everybody and, you know, the crowd kind of moved from one bit of entertainment to the next because there was only one or two things happening ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, and so it was a bit more of a shared experience rather than, you know, an individual experience. Absolutely. In, in that sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that we could step back a little bit into something like that. Well, I mean, maybe it's a good way to start, you know, just not full throttle. We're going at least we're stuck in first gear for right now and then just <laughs> shifting up as the years go by. Yeah. Yeah. And this might be a good year for, for me to uh, actually enjoy it a little bit. 
<laughs> well, hey, you know, I think out of anybody, you deserve to enjoy that wasteland makeshift. I do. I, I really do. And act, honestly, like I love what I do at Wasteland because it keeps me moving because, you know, mm-hmm. I'm I'm not exactly a, a full on introvert, but I'm definitely not extroverted. And I if I didn't have the camera in hand and like need to go shoot this, need to go shoot that, I'd spend a lot more time in camp, which, you know, I'd love hanging out with the tribe. Oh, we love um, having you. Yeah, it, it's always great. You guys just throw food in my mouth and say, go get them, cowboy. <laughs> You're a growing boy, makeshift. You can't just run out there on an empty stomach. Right. But yeah, I, I'm glad that I've gotten to meet people from so many tribes and see so many different things. And when I show up with the camera and people know who I am, they're like, hey, let me show you this cool thing. Make sure to capture this. You know, it's, it's really cool. I get the VIP treatment wherever I go. You know, <laughs> the VIP treatment is nice, and sometimes it's more than you expect at Wasteland. Because I once went to the <laughs> once went to Legio's camp, Legio I, and they were doing a feast, and I got to eat a sheep's eyeball. What? And that was um, it's like eating a grape, but with a lot of water inside and then gritty. Oh my god! Yeah. Would but, you uh, Would you do it again? Um, yeah, I probably would. I mean, I maybe want to try something different other than the eyeball this time, just to try something new. But Now, I want to explore this a little bit because a sheep only has two eyeballs. So yes. one, either you were like really highly regarded or for the last like two hours, they were like, hey, anyone want this sheep eyeball? And no one was taking it. And then uh, that you was showed exactly up and they're what like, it was. And they're that like, here's exactly a sucker. Was. Yeah, because <laughs> I just keep hearing eyeball, eyeball. And then the guy looks at me, he's like, eyeball. I'm like, fuck it. Why not? Oh man! Just pop it in my mouth, go for it, and I'm just like, okay, I did the thing, and now it's in my mouth. Now I wow. have to swallow it. <laughs> That's such a different experience than I got at Legio because I I've been uh, invited to one of their feasts, which is an absolute treat. Because oh, it's a blast. They, they do a great cook. job. Yeah, and um, I got what was it like? Like steak skewers and polenta, and I was like, this is a gourmet meal. What are you guys doing over here? <laughs> They, they, those Romans definitely know how to eat and drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty wild. And yeah, getting, getting invited. I mean, you know, over the years they've had to kind of curb how much uh, public food giving happens mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, the uh, health department gets involved and they don't like that kind of thing, but you're totally allowed to feed your friends. And at Wasteland, everybody's your friend. It, it, yeah. There's, there's a lot of uh, room, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of gray area there. And yeah, just going around seeing what everyone's cooking and, and you know, it, it's like ridiculous hospitality happening all over the place. <laughs> it's, it's, it is, um, you know, even, even with your frenemies, I have been treated so well by the Skullduggers, <laughs> by the, the army of Los Angeles, you know, like they have invited me over for feasts and, you know, it's always fun to, you know, you know, harass people and, you know, pretend to your enemies, but it's even more fun to be there with your friends and just enjoy a meal and sit down and get that real nice bonding time. And there's no bonding like there is in a post-apocalyptic environment. I'll tell you what. (laughs) Yeah. We've also had some like enemies become captive in our camp. Uh, Mm -hmm. Do you have any favorites? Oh boy. Uh, Let's see here. Well, one of my favorite favorites is um, the emissary. (laughs) Uh, who likes to claim that you should vote for him to be war chief of the Dukes, which will never happen. He's not even a Duke. He's not even a Duke. <laughs> but he, uh, he had, I forgotten what exactly he had done, but he ended up getting handcuffed. And then I'm like, all right, you know what? That's it. And I sit him down and I call our tribe member Grin over. And I'm like, Grin, would you please read to Emissary until he can no longer take? He's like, absolutely. Page one. <laughs> just, I leave for maybe 10 minutes and I come back and Emissary is looking at me like I learned my lesson type of deal. I'm like, okay. All right. And for those that don't know, Grin uh, joined the Dukes of the Nuke. And this year was really interesting because his first year, I don't think Vash told him uh, that he should blend in with the tribe. And so he came <laughs> as the Cheshire mm-hmm. Cat. Am I saying it mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he he basically had the Cheshire Cat inspired costume. He was in like purple. He had uh, face makeup. He was like, yeah, purple and green. Mm -hmm. Um, He almost didn't fit the aesthetic, but almost immediately he like 
started dirtying himself up and making himself more ratty. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, he his character, you know, his backstory is that he's a follower of Alice. He found an Alice in Wonderland book, and it be basically became his Bible. And so when when emissary was sat down with him, he was literally reading Alice in Wonderland page by page. <laughs> 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 and and I mean he is so dedicated to his character. I didn't know what his real voice was like for two years. I think um, <laughs> and it threw he, me the first time I heard it. I'm like I'm like wait what? Like, <laughs> yeah, and he's been such a great addition to the Dukes. He Absolutely. he really brings it. Um, he's now what our our chemicals officer. Uh, yeah, he's right? our chemical uh, chemical weapons specialist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which just fits so perfectly. Uh, there are a lot of positions in the Dukes that. The one thing I like about the Dukes, and just to touch on this, is that uh, every tribe has their own kind of initiation process of, you know, showing everybody the ropes and everything. Uh, our armorer, Vash, he came up with a field manual for the Dukes of the Nuke, and it's all military themed, and it has Sarge's tips. And so it's like, <laughs> Sarge's tips number three, don't get demoted to FNG. <laughs> uh, Sarge's tips number four. Do not take the war chief's hat. <laughs> <laughs> so great. And uh, yeah, his whole circle, they're, um, they're like, you know, a bunch of people from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. They kind of joined us more or less on Facebook before, yep. what, 2012 or something like that. Uh, 2013? 13. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're like huge cosplayers. They're, you know, I think they do multiple conventions a year. So he's kind of brought down this whole different contingent into the Dukes where we were mostly out of LA and uh, they all just bring it and they have a good time. We just keep growing, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a good, we've got a really good size. I, Absolutely. I think um, our average for the last couple of years has been what about, about 15, 20 people. Yeah. About that. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if we could do much bigger. I mean, we have more members than 20 people, uh, but not everyone comes every year. So we kind of, mm -hmm. you know, we fluctuate. <laughs> It is a fluctuating number for sure. It's it's hard to plan on. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as tribe leader for 10 years, <laughs> as war chief, uh, what does it take to get a tribe to pull this off year after year, uh, not hate each other's guts um, and be able to put on a show? Give us give us your wisdom. Oh, oh war chief. Boy. Uh, well, you know. This all started with me with camping with my friends on a movie set and it grew from there. And if you're going to make a tribe surround it with people, you know, fill it with people that you, you love and just go from there. I think what it really takes to run a tribe is not a tribe leader, but like it's exactly what it is a tribe of people. It takes, you know, teamwork, communication, all those are keys to victory when it comes to tribe work, communication, victory, all of these things come from uh, hard work, dedication, and just, you know, just trying to make the best of it. And most importantly, having fun. You know, some tribes implode, sometimes they don't. But in the end, you know, it's not worth it if you're not having fun with it. Yeah. Um, and that's the one thing that I wanted to do. Like, I just wanted to build this Vietnam firebase in the middle of the desert and be blaring <laughs> motorhead and just being a general loud, loud mouth. <laughs> and so far mission accomplished, but you know, i never expected it to get this big. I never expected uh, things to go that way. But if you have a creative drive and you want to share it with other people, that's a great reason to start a tribe and just for everybody to have a good time. Yeah. And I think um, we, we got really lucky because we have a lot of great people in our tribe, but with a lot of like various skills. Mm -hmm. And so everyone mm -hmm. can kind of play up to their strengths, you know, like, like you, Hotshot, Vash are all amazing at, at the lore and the storytelling mm -hmm. um, and, and being able to lead a group of Dukes into a scene with another tribe. Um, oh, yeah. we have, we have got a bunch of guys that are really great at building, um, especially mm -hmm. our San Diego contingent where mm -hmm. they bring a trailer just loaded up with lumber and metal and all sorts of stuff. And then, you know, they'll just go at it for, yeah. you know, 16 hours a day until our camp's built and just kind of show everyone else like here, screw this in over here, move this over there. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a lot of people that are really great at costuming and, and building small things and making weapons. It's just so great. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And everybody's brought something to the table. Like, come yeah. on, they're all excited to, 
you know, be a part of the team. And that's, that's an amazing thing. You know, um, I'm honored that our tribe has been alone around for as long as it has been because it, it, it's, you know, I get to see you guys every year. It's a very much a big reunion for me. And not only that, we all have a blast doing it. Um, yeah. <laughs> some of us <laughs> even more so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, ready for this? Mm-hmm. Dukes After Dark. What is this all about? <laughs> oh, I, I was not there when this happened. And I think we have uh, Ladyfinger, Ladyfingers to blame for this. But uh, what's Dukes of After Dark all about? Dukes After Dark is <laughs> Dukes After Dark is a uh, concept that I was not there. I, I don't think I was there during its conception. But uh, this was they. A lot of people want to know what happens after the lights go out at the Dukes camp, and <laughs> which is really late. We keep the lights on as long as we can. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we will keep the lights on until people tell us to turn it off or the sun comes up. But uh, yeah, the uh, Dukes After Dark is a a series of fictional smut stories involving the Dukes <laughs> and other tribes that people demanded they wanted to see. They're like, we want to see the Dukes, you know, triple X. We want to see the HBO porn version of the Dukes of the Nuke. And so seeing how there's no HBO anymore. They've had to settle on stories, and so it's now become a collection of short stories that people will write about us paired with other Wastelanders or each other. And, you know, with consent, we'll get both people's permission and then write a tale for it and do it in the cheesiest grocery store book sign, you know, like line questions, like your, <laughs> or, or manner, excuse me. And, um, this has really taken off in the fact that people will start making up pairings like, uh, Grim and Hotshot are now considered Grimshot. Uh, <laughs> oh, <you> know, no. <laughs> we we, we want to ship Mongo and Grim. We want to ship Vash and Makeshift, you know, like yeah. nobody's safe. Um, <laughs> and so uh, we did a reading last year of Dukes After Dark stories that some Dukes and then other Wastelanders wrote. And we gathered everybody and then uh, everybody we get to read in their sexiest voice uh, to the good. crowd. And it was it was a lot of fun. I will be helming that project this year to give the tribe a hand. So I'm very <laughs> curious to see what will be coming down the pipe for those. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure um, I want to say that the origin of this was probably the paddle. Hotshot was oh, um, initiating in at yeah. NFGs, yeah. FNGs. Mm-hmm. That paddle. <laughs> yep. And so in order to become an official member of the tribe, you had to get paddled. Uh, and so we had just that little bit of S and M uh, going on when the lights went out during initiations every year. Yeah, yeah. And um, people get into it. <laughs> oh, they did. Yeah, people love it. And then you know, obviously, with my whole you know how many lashes I've taken at Wasteland, that doesn't help our cause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's definitely a, a lot of fetish them. And now, now here's the thing: there are some tribes in Wasteland that do fetish. Uh, oh yeah, hundred percent. We just yeah. tease it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just tease it. Yeah. Yeah. Although we are we are one of um, only two tribes, I think, to have done a pinup calendar and we're working on our second one. That is right. Yeah. We're working on our second calendar. Um, I am still thinking about, uh, I, I believe I'm in this calendar this year, if I'm not mistaken. But You have to be. Well, I'm exiled. So, I mean, now, now you have to be in it, Makeshift. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be in this one. You're going to be in this one. Yeah. Really? Yeah, heck yeah. Why wouldn't I be? The who needs War Chief Grim when people want makeshift? <laughs> I got to start doing some push-ups. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to get a tan this time? You know, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe. Uh, I'll try. But, you know, I, 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 I seem to get a lot of complaints whenever I take my shirt off at camp. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's because you're blinding everybody. Well, I don't mean to. I'm just the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in the original Dukes After Dark calendar, you and Mongo were 100% buck naked. Allegedly. How far did you guys actually take it? <laughs> uh, in the sense of our clothes? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we, we both had to get bare ass naked for that i mean you know (laughs) go big or go home right and you guys have known each other for a long time so yeah we went to college the first time yeah i've known him since freshman year of college so (laughs) we we were okay it was it was definitely the experience of uh 
<laughs> of the year for sure when that happened. <laughs> um, definitely not what I pictured when I got up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that wasn't a planned shot then? No, no. It, 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 I think it was down the line. I was just like, I had never done anything like that in a photo shoot manner. So uh, like it was just like, you know, the camera crew and everybody and just, you know, being at the grit farm and taking those photos and it was fine. But at first I'm like, Oh man, all right, <laughs> you got this. And I was just, I remember apologizing to bacon and, um, hard ass who are two <laughs> tribe members of ours on the bill crew. And they, <laughs> and they're also MPs, but they had to hold the background up. And so they had a pretty good view of both of our asses <laughs> and i'm like I, I'm, it's a full moon boys i'm sorry <laughs> yeah they were seeing how the bacon was made <laughs> that's hilarious man well you know what i uh I, I once i saw those shots come out i was like man i should have been there i don't but i'm well, a long now way you'll away. Be a part of it yeah even if i have to take the photos here i'm gonna try to make it to the uh photography day but you know it's tough being this far yeah, being in a pandemic is not helpful either. Yeah, it doesn't help either. <laughs> <laughs> we'll but just I'm do excited. a social distancing shoot. I'm excited to um, to get to do the calendar. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And oh, you know, it is. It's, it's, it's a blast it's just, to do. Like, I don't think I have any real shots of me in character even, you know? Like, I get some, you know, a few of the photographers will shoot me, but I'm always mm -hmm. with camera in hand. Never really, like, as makeshift. I don't know. We got a good picture of you with that giant bird. Yeah, the bird. What are we going <laughs> to do with that? For those of you that don't know, Makeshift snuck off one night. I'm like, where's Makeshift? Where's Makeshift? They're like, we don't know. <laughs> so I leave for a hot second. I come back and I see Mike, I'm sorry, Makeshift standing there, <laughs> his arms extended, holding a giant bird with its wings also extended. And I believe you were calling. <laughs> I may have been. Because <laughs> that's one of the relics. Yes, you were very. You stole a lot of relics that night. Yeah, the relics. I, I I don't know if the if the relics have a really good future because you know it's basically things that you're supposed to steal. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of become like a more of an inside thing because you have to know about it first, right? Because mm -hmm. um, people tend to hide them. <laughs> well, they'll have symbols on the camps, I yeah. believe, if there is a relic in there, but. Um a lot of people need to be told at the event, you know, otherwise if you're in the forums, you'll usually hear about it. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think the best way to do it is to have it be another tribe's mission to get that tribe's relic. But yeah. We'll, we'll work this out. But yeah, so it was, it was a relic um, from the white crows. Uh, they're now a defunct tribe, unfortunately. I wonder if they'll make it back, but um, it was sitting on the table at our neighbors, the DXC Dauntless Express Corps. Are they a corp or are they a corps? I think they're a corp. <laughs> they're another corp that gets called core. <laughs> so it was sitting on a table with a bunch of other stuff. And I noticed the symbol and I was like, Ooh, do I steal it? Do I barter for it? So I was talking to a lady of DXC shell. And I was like, um, so I've noticed you have a relic there. May I steal it? <laughs> Cause sometimes you're like, I don't know if people have plans for it. And it wasn't really on a table that was in public area. Um, and she said, I'll barter to you for it because it's not ours. And I was like, oh, really? And she said, yeah, um, you can have it. And the only thing you have to do is, you know, make a big deal of it online because she knew I had the YouTube show. And she was like, I want you to rub it in their faces. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I can do that. So I did one episode and then the White Crows reached out and they were like, yeah, part of our storyline for that is that it's unlucky. <laughs> 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 so so now the thing is i gotta get rid of this darn thing and i forgot to bring it to the last event well that's just part of the curse now isn't it <laughs> <laughs> i suppose it is <laughs> yeah so it's actually sitting in in the closet uh, with the rest of my wasteland stuff and it is not getting forgotten this year i'm sure no don't worry i'm sure it's gonna follow you <laughs> then like a couple flat tires later and then yeah. you know <laughs> there's a snake in my boot you know all those little things yeah so anyway uh the white crow will probably be hanging in the duke's camp and i'd like to challenge anybody to steal it because it's no longer unlucky <laughs> says we me. won't even stop you <laughs> we won't even stop you just come take the darn thing just take it just get it out of here <laughs> yeah it's actually a really cool relic it's uh it's like this giant like bird i think it could actually fly at one point like you could throw it 
Um, I don't know if it still flies, but yeah, it's ginormous. Well, if it, if it, if it's flying, then we're all in trouble because then it'll land anywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if the windstorm picks up, who knows where the hell this thing's going to end up? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Good times. Uh, what else do we have going on in the Dukes? Anything big this year? We kind of decided to, you know, just like do it just like Wasteland's doing. We're not going to build a whole lot of new stuff, but we're just going to improve on what we have. Yeah, I think there will be, you know, more obviously more gun running missions. Um, you know, obviously there's that whole justice for grim tension brewing uh, that may get a mission of its own. Uh -huh. um, we have the calendars coming out. We got, uh, you know, it's it's. I think people have plans. We want to, you know, keep our armory going. And I think it's it's our year to be more inclusive uh, to, you know, just what we – back to our status quo. You know, yeah. I don't think we have any big lore coming up per se. Right on. So we can, we can you know, start instigating some stuff this year. Maybe I've been to shore leave. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, and just when our whole water world area – uh, has diminished. Ah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that is so sad. I'm like, what are you guys going to do next? Like, you have to do something. Oh, man. Well, you know, it's uh, it's hard to say. I'm just, a, I'm, remember, I'm just an exile. I have no say in these things. <laughs> you should ask Hotshot. She's in charge. I know. I know. Hotshot, fix You got to get her on the show. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, here's the thing. I, as compared to the YouTube show, which every episode of the, of, you know, a video takes forever. You gotta, you gotta shoot it. I gotta be mm -hmm. on location. It needs editing. So it's like days and days. This podcast is compared to that a breeze, <laughs> so, Oh yeah. <laughs> but I'm still, I'm trying, I'm trying to keep it to like an episode a week. Um, so far I haven't missed one and I, and I keep about two or three in my pocket at all times. So I always have about a month ready to go. It, my biggest problem now is being able to get everybody on the show before the event. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a lot of work ahead of you then. <laughs> I know. I know. it. Yeah. And then there's, of course, there's all these other events around the country. Have you been to any of the other events? You know, I haven't. I've wanted to, but I just, you know, my work schedule would only let me permit to take Wasteland off per se. Yeah. That I think, Christmas. <laughs> I think that's what's holding a lot of people back is, you know, Wasteland is now a week. It's not a weekend anymore. It used oh, yeah. to be get there on Friday, hang out till Sunday. It was like basically a two-day event. Eh, and Wasteland week doesn't have the same ring to it. Though, no, does it, it doesn't. No. What are they going to do about that? <sighs> well, I don't know, but it's false advertising in my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now the event starts on Wednesday. So it's a five-day event. What about wa Wasteland Wednesday? Wasteland, <laughs> just one day. <laughs> just one day. <laughs> yeah. But also, not only that, there's probably, what, two or three days of tribe building before that. So you actually yeah, get there three. the weekend yeah. before. Even more at sometimes. Yeah. And so it is a full week. So that's a lot of people's vacation time, uh, which means there's less vacation time for other events. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it in the end, though, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do want to try to get to more festivals. I was actually, let's see, in a couple weeks ago, I'm trying to think in, in my fourth dimension here. Of a couple weeks ago, we released the Atomic Falls episode. Uh -huh. um, th that's the event in Oklahoma. They put on uh -huh. a really cool thing. It's about 200 people, give or take. Um, it might be the biggest festival in the Southeast. Well, I guess it's not really a Southeast, but I kind of attach it because yeah. Atomic Falls, Aftermath, and Junkyard Fest they're all kind of working together to create the scene on, on this side of the country. Yeah. Uh, but they're all smaller events, but I think atomic falls is the biggest out of the three. And, um, they've got a really cool thing going. They, they do it at a paintball, um, and airsoft. Oh, um, that's perfect. Ground. So they have like tanks, they've got planes, they've got cars. It's like this whole thing, you know, the art is already built. Yeah. So I'm really that's trying smart. to make it to that one. Um, which is the end well, of Well, let me know when you go, I might have to go with you. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's talk, uh, after cause I'm, I definitely want to try to make it this year. And then, um, detonation at uranium Springs is the Happen second biggest festival uh -huh. and, and that got pushed to Halloween weekend this year. That I would like to get to eventually cause I keep missing it. Yeah. And that one's really close for you too. It's a, yeah, it's, that's, it's that's only a one day closer. drive. Yeah. I'll take that. It's only one yeah. day drive. <laughs> yeah. And that event, I went in 2014 before any permanent structures were there. Now it's a whole tent city, not a tent city. It's a shanty city. 
It's a step up from intensity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're slightly more permanent. They have walls. Hey, that's more than most have in the wasteland. Yeah. So that's one thing I'd like to do is try to get to more festivals this year since last year was just a complete bust. Yeah. Well, you know, I think eventually you'll get to a mall. <laughs> I have no doubt about that. Yeah. Some of, th- some of them are just mistimed. I want to go to the one in Japan. I don't know what it's called, but I keep seeing photos from it. I'm like, man, I really want to go there and rock yeah. this War Chief Grimm. <laughs> yeah. And what is it? Junk Town in Poland or something like that? There's a, there's a bunch in Europe. Um, and the one in Spain I want to go to, too. There's so many of these things, dude. We got to just, you know, quit our jobs and let's, go, <laughs> let's just wasteland all the time. You know what? You know what I want, makeshift. You know what the, the exile wants. I want my own wasteland wacky racers cartoon. That's what I want. <laughs> like, like death carts, but yeah, yeah, like just you know, just a cartoon on a Saturday mornings about all the wastelanders and their characters. I love it. <laughs> oh my, yeah, that sounds great. And then they can visit all the different festivals. Absolutely, yeah. It's about traveling across the post-apocalyptic America in one big yeah. race. <laughs> and speaking of the death carts, do you realize that there's now like a death cart circuit? Because I think three or four or five festivals are doing these death cart races. Oh, no, I, I hadn't heard of it. Yeah. So the death carts are like, you know, the smaller things, the go-karts, the tractors, the like mopeds. Um, but they're made to look like full-size Mad Max cars. Uh-huh. And and each of these festivals will have a track and they race around and some of them use airsoft when they're when they're racing and <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think it's kind of cool because it it you know turns it into um uh what is it mario brothers uh racing. Oh, mario kart yeah. yeah mario kart exactly <laughs> which is fantastic i'm all about that i mean if they even better if they're toting balloons on them that they got to pop yeah and that's one of the things that this is why you know, we need to expand our horizons past Wasteland is because all these smaller festivals can actually do more things that Wasteland has gotten too big to do. Does that make sense? Well, I think this is your chance to open up another podcast for what, you know, the exile and makeshift to go on these wacky (laughs) adventures across America. (laughs) Are you serious? Will you come to Atomic Falls with me? I mean, if, if, if you want, it's a date. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Rad. I've got a spot in my camper for you. Perfect. Perfect. (laughs) I can cook. So no worries. Yes. Awesome. All right, dude. Well, it's been really great catching up with you. you Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Do you have anything else you want to add? Any, Um, actually, what does war chief Grimm, what does, what does the whisper in the wind want to tell wastelanders? The whisper in the wind in the words of Douglas MacArthur, I shall return. (laughs) You are so coming back this year. Uh, well, no, you never know. You've been dropping hints since like the day after you got exiled. I have not been dropping hints by any means. I think you guys have been just wanting to see hints. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're such a big part of the Dukes. It's it, We feel a little empty without you. Uh, nah, the Dukes. The Dukes are the Dukes without <laughs> even without the war chief. <laughs> I'm Who just you one have in small charge? cog in the machine. What do you that? think should be in charge? Who do I think should be in charge? Yeah. It doesn't matter what I think. I'm exiled. It's now up to the tribe. It doesn't matter. <laughs> don't throw that on me. <laughs> okay. I see. I see. You don't want to pick favorites. Well, I mean, I can't. It's like making me choose between my children. Well, here's what I should ask in this case. On um, When we were doing Teardown, how many people did you go around to and declare them that they were going to be the war chief now? <sighs> I think I hit everybody once. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was special. I was like, oh, man, he really wants me to be war chief. Should I make this happen? Well, but- I mean, by the way, you're war chief now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was special, but, you know, I get it. You're special to me, makeshift. You'll always be special to the war chief. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> man, as the- and here's the thing. We're only like one year uh, more seasoned than, than most of the Dukes, but we're still the oldest Dukes. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're the relics. Yeah. We are the true tribe relics. <laughs> yeah. It all goes back to us. And really it all goes back to you. Cause you're, you're the only one that was uh, a Duke in 2011. Oof. Although you yeah. missed a year. So I, I caught up. Yeah. So we're tied. Yep. <laughs> so if I, if I just let you take this year, then you can become the oldest Duke. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that. Uh, well, you'll get comfortable with it. But here's the thing. Because because this show is doing, like, kind of okay, and mm-hmm. because I've been doing a lot more, you know, makeshift stuff, 
uh-huh. on this channel. I think last year, 2019, not last year, the year before, I really started to notice that people knew me out there and I, I love it. It's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also incredibly distracting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not used to it. So I don't know what to do. Like everyone's always like, Hey, love your show. Thanks for your stuff. I'm like, Hey, thanks. Thanks for <laughs> listening. Appreciate you. Here's a pin. <laughs> that's, that's more than most do. Uh, there you go. Yeah. You know, a true gentleman. It's been a lot of fun. I got to say. And I started just wanting to like share everyone else's stories because the, the footage I get from Wasteland is always magnificent. Mm-hmm. And I think the world should see it. And there's and then, so much more to tell even beyond the footage, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, when I'm sitting bored and I'm like, I've got this footage, I've got these ideas, I'm, you know, I'm watching the forums. Um, Sometimes it comes up like, you know, this information is not out there yet or or it's out there, but it's not easy to access. And so I'll just kind of throw it together into a video. And then suddenly, like, you know, my 12 things you need to know about Wasteland Weekend video is one of the most popular. And I didn't even dress up that day. (laughs) I'm like, should I should redo that in character? Because, you know, it's just me in a T-shirt. One of these days I'll have to crash your show and co-host it with you. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. Actually, if you know, here's what we're going to do at Atomic Falls. You're coming on the show. We'll, we'll record an episode right there. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you. I hope that uh, the apocalypse, the real world apocalypse is treating you well. Oh, same to you, sir. Same to you. I hope you're riding the lightning just like me. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening in as I had a wonderful chat with War Chief Grimm about all things Wasteland Weekend and Dukes of the Nuke. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. Please, please, please share it with your friends. And if you didn't, if you hated this episode, share it with your enemies on a flaming kamikaze boat that sure makes a hole. I'll see you next time, survivors. Stay alive. Hey, Survivors, if you want to help support The Apocalypse Post and get some rad merch in exchange, head over to theapocalypsepost.square.site, where you can pick up some patches, postcards, or our newest edition, a set of guitar picks. Or get yourself a limited edition Apocabob pin. This little man is showing the world that all it takes to survive the end times is a gas mask and a dream of, well, just staying alive.